hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so we'll resume our discussion on the subject of neural networks so it's been a while since i've posted a video related to this subject so the next series of videos will be related to neural networks so so far in uh, the subject neural networks we have discussed various uh, introductory basic concepts uh, about uh, uh, the architecture of the basic architecture of neural networks comparison between uh, biological and artificial neurons about the basic concept of learning or training of neural networks some basic parameters associated with neural networks input output activation function uh, threshold a lot of things basic things which uh, we have discussed so before watching this video i would uh, recommend you to please watch all the previous videos related to the subject by checking on the playlist and then watch this video so in the previous videos we just uh, discussed uh, we had a very basic discussion on the concept of learning and we also discussed about various uh, you know categories in which we can uh, broad categories in which we can divide uh, learning types such as uh, supervised learning uh, unsupervised learning reinforcement learning which essentially involve the application or uh, with or without feedback so in this video we are going to discuss some basic learning rules that are applied for the training of neural networks okay and all of these are based on the you know the concept the way our human brain functions so the inspiration is from that and it is applied for the training of artificial neural networks so before uh, discussing the learning rules we'll just have a quick look at uh, the same things the basic things related to uh, learning and neural network so we know that the basic objective of a neural network is first the learning phase the training phase okay uh, in which it is given with a lot of uh, uh, training sets it is uh, exposed to new and new data and then when it is exposed to new and new data it generalizes the data it forms patterns out of those data depending on the way it is programmed it classifies it into different categories which is called as the process of generalization and then the final stage is the application of those uh, generalized results to solve real life mean uh, problems the the in the the reason why it is designed okay so it is very much similar to the way our human brain functions you know uh, uh, first we go through the training phase where uh, it may be about learning a new language or a new subject related to our field or suppose as uh, basic as trying a new exercise type so we go through the training process every day and then we form our own conclusions our own uh, concepts and theories related to that and then we apply the results uh, in our day-to-day -day life so it can be from any any field okay it's not just about uh, our professional fields our real personal life uh, related things also it is applicable to that so the basic learning or training mechanism is that the the neural network is first subjected or exposed to various kind of stimulus by the environment and as a result of that it undergoes changes in its parameters parameters means weights bias all that i'm talking about artificial neural networks or it undergoes a change in its overall internal structure to adjust with the changing environment and then it adapts and it responds in a new way to fit into 
or to to adjust with the changing environment okay so basically the neural networks or this whole learning process is generally adapting and adjusting to any new stimulus given to it by making proper parametric adjustments or changes in the overall structure to get the desired output so generally the change happens in two ways okay the two ways a neural network can adjust or adapt itself to the changing environment first is the change in the weights so if you know if you have watched the previous videos this is the general uh, representation of an artificial neuron where x1 x2 x3 are the input signals w1 w2 w3 they are the weights associated with these signals the synaptic connections and each neuron gives its output depending on its activation function we have discussed about various kinds of activation functions so depending on that it gives the overall output so the change happens either by changing in the weights the value of these weights or change in the overall structure overall, overall structure means instead of using three inputs it can use four or two or one or five anything like that instead of having this one output layer neuron it can have two three or it can have some hidden layer of neurons also so that involves change in the structure so it is of two types parameter based learning and structure learning so the parameter learning it involves it focuses on change in the weights the connecting weights of the synaptic connections structure learning focuses on change in the overall structure okay now we have already discussed about these things the broad categories of classifying the learning process which is supervised learning unsupervised learning reinforcement learning okay now uh, these are generally based on whether there is feedback or present or not supervised learning involves application of external feedback which is similar to learning with the help of a teacher a guide a mentor who consistently provides uh, feedback related to where you are going wrong with it whether you need to change your approach uh, what mistakes you are making what are the what is the progress that you have made so you are consistently provided with the feedback from the outside so you can change you know where you are going wrong so you adjust that you make some changes to that you correct yourself and you uh, get the desired results reinforcement learning is also based on that but it is a generally a probabilistic uh, thing uh, related to artificial neural networks rather than ab absolute unsupervised learning is self learning okay there is no teacher you make mistakes you learn from your mistakes you make the changes yourself and you get the desired results so these are the broad categories in which we can classify the whole learning process in the next series of videos we are going to focus basically specifically on the specific training methods or learning methods that are used for the training or the learning uh, phase of the neural network so they are error correction learning memory based learning hebbian learning competitive learning boltzmann learning there are also other methods but these are the five important uh, learning rules that are generally used so in this video we are going to be focused on error correction learning so error correction learning is very much similar to supervised learning okay it is very much similar to almost similar to supervised learning so this whole learning method you know it involves a basic neural network okay it can consist of input neurons output neurons hidden layer of neurons it, uh, it can be of different architecture okay and it can have associated weights between the synaptic connections connecting two neurons and each neuron has a certain activation function associated with it so please watch the previous videos where i have discussed in detail about these things okay the basic concepts okay
so it consists of input output or hidden layers of neurons the input signals and there is a comparator because it has to compare the actual output with the desired or target output which is the external feedback so you can say it is a parameter based learning because it focuses on change in the weights rather than changing the architecture so the block diagram of error correction learning it looks something like this okay so the input is given okay the input is given then it is given to the input neurons and the hidden or intermediate layers of neurons which depending on their activation function they pass that input to the output layer okay then the output layer of neurons depending on their activation function they produce an output okay now this output it is compared with a target value like uh, in control system we have set point here also there is a target component the the desired value of the output which we want so it is compared with that whether it is more than that or less than that so here the error signal the difference between the actual output and the desired output it is calculated and this error signal is given through feedback to the output neuron and depending on this error signal there is change in the weights associated with the synaptic connections between the output neuron and the intermediate level of neurons so that the output is close to the desired value it may never be exactly equal to the desired output but what we can do is make the necessary adjustments so that the difference between the actual and the desired output is as small as possible okay so here we can see how it happens so this is the you know kind of a, a node representation you can see here it is the for a specific output neuron let's say the kth neuron okay we are focusing not on the entire layers of output neurons we are just picking one specific neuron okay let be the kth level neuron this is the output neuron here it is given the input signals from multiple input neurons through synaptic connections synaptic weights vkn is the induced local field or the net input to the output neuron the combined effect of all the input neurons again i repeat we are just focusing on one single neuron it is connected with multiple input neurons or multiple hidden level neurons so vk here okay this is the combined or net input of the resultant input of all the neurons that is connected to then the output of this kth neuron it is compared with the desired output the feedback the target the set point the error signal is generated which is called as ekn and depending on the error signal the change in weights happen so how much change in the weight has to happen that is decided by the error signal so there is a mathematical formula for that so the error signal it depends on the target output it is computed as ekn is dkn minus ykn where n is a specific instant of time at which the error signal is calculated so it is the desired output minus the actual output depending on that error signal the change in synaptic weights how much change has to happen that is determined by the error signal so here the change in synaptic weights connecting the output neuron a specific output neuron k connected with a specific hidden or input level neuron j okay here delta w k j is the synaptic weight connecting neuron j and neuron k okay here j and k can take any values okay i'm just focusing on a particular like that the change will happen in all of these synaptic connections so here we are just uh, using a general representation of 
a neuron J and a neuron K and the synaptic connection associated with it. So the change that has to happen depending on the error signal is given by so the change in synaptic weight uh, for a particular neuron okay k the k is neuron depending on the error signal okay it is given by the change in synaptic weight delta w k j where it is the weight connecting neuron j and k and that is given by eta e k x j l where eta is called as a learning constant okay it is a positive value it is the rate of learning which is a positive value generally xj is the input signal of the j's neuron and yk is the output of the k's neuron okay depending on the net input vk okay here i am just picking a particular neuron okay there are many input neurons here i'm just picking the J's neuron okay and the synaptic weight associated with that J's neuron and the Kth output neuron okay so WKJ this synaptic change in weight happens depending on the error signal EK depending on this mathematical expression eta EK XJ okay so this is the change in synaptic weight that has to happen this is the rate of learning, learning constant, which is a positive value. EK is the error signal, the difference between the desired and the actual output. And XJ is the particular input signal from the preceding layer. Okay, it can be the hidden layer or input layer. So this is generally, it is called as the delta rule or withdraw half rule. So this mathematical expression. So this is the basic concept of error correction learning which is applied to neural networks where the change in synaptic weights it depends on the error signal which is the difference between the actual and the desired output and it happens as per this mathematical uh, expression so in the next series of videos we'll be discussing the other uh, learning rules so I hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology. Have a great day. Thank you very much.